Hi my friends and welcome back on this new episode about New Zealand road trip. I spent three weeks driving around New Zealand South Island and I want to share with you the perfect itinerary. If you have not seen the past episode, you missed the Blue Turquoise Lake Pukaki, some weird spheric rock on the coast and a huge amount of amazing seals. Me not seeing blooming of lupins, me being kicked out of a pub in Dundin, me bathing in Antarctic Sea, so just normal and random stuff. Today I want to share with you the South Island entire length drive from the bottom to the top, passing by the west coast. I try to condense everything in one video even though I'm sure I won't be able because of the huge amount of places, unmissable places I visited. So put yourself on ease on your dry clothes because you will see a lot of rain. From the southernmost part of New Zealand's South Island I drove north towards Tiano. Honestly the only interesting part was the scenic drive between these cities. I do recommend seeing it because the landscape kept changing from green pastures to canyons forged by rivers and a fresh timber smelling forest. Here now I just spent one night, yes I didn't go to Milford Sound because I had to meet some friend up in Queenstown the day after, I'm sure I will come back there, give it the right time it deserves, so make sure you put it in your bucket list and in your itinerary, this is probably the best thing you can do as see in New Zealand. From Queenstown then I drove towards Wanak and the mountain pass connecting with Hust on the west side of the New Zealand South Highland. So the coincidence wanted that the road that we are now gonna cover is actually a panoramic road starting from Wanak and going all up to the house past. As all through this falls, look out, uh, track. Uh. This part literally blew my mind as dozens of waterfalls were decorating the rainforest around me. It was like me for sound round towards me since I missed it. Reached us, I had to get fuel and I realized that was the worst place to do it. The more south you go on the west coast, the more expensive the fuel gets. So make sure you reach us with the full tank of fuel. So we get repair from the rain and the uh, us conservation uh, visitor center is really raining cats and dogs at the moment. <laughs> So this is the west coast, we are here, Wanaka, which was Lake Wanaka, so we went all through this road and we're gonna go farther north. The plan is to sleep in a free campsite, but at, ah, here, Wataroa, because close to Wataroa there are Franz Josef uh, Glacier and Fox Glacier. So in the first episode we went hiking to Müllersat, which was here, somewhere here, because we were seeing the Mount Cook. But we basically went all down and came up from this side, because here there is the mountain ranges which can be passed with a car. I was trying to take a video with a point high camera and I don't know if you can see it there's a lot of moisture inside I think that before when we took the video of the waterfalls uh, some way moisture entered so the plan now is try to dip it I don't know yeah inside the rice I hope it's just inside the cover and not inside Keep in mind this moment because it was the first but not the last time my phone will have problems during this road trip. Anyway, jumped back in the car, I drove north towards Fox Glacier. After a while I felt dizzy and so I decided to take a nap and after the nap I realized I parked in a kind of attraction so it was a pity you not know, taking a stroll around a bay in where the tropical forest was literally going inside the rough sea. Oh. So in this place we can see dolphins, Fjordland crested penguin. No. 
Ai, <laughs> it's crazy because like 20 meters in this direction there is the sea and we are inside the jungle wait wait <laughs> uh, uh, oh wow ah there's a lake uh, I was talking about the forest and the sea All right. Okay, let's go. And yes, if you were wondering, Bus Bunny Rice fixed my phone. After this short break, I drove north toward Fox Glacier. There were not three campsites, and if you have watched the previous episode, you know I prefer not to waste fifty dollars for paid campsite. So it's like change of plans. We came to a paid uh, campsite because the free campsite we wanted to go is 50 kilometers ahead of us. Tomorrow we want to stay here because there are the two main glaciers to visit and it didn't make any sense going back and forth so 100 kilometers for just a free campsite. So this campsite was just $20 and it would have cost a way more in fuel because fuel here is $3 per liter. It's totally no sense. So tonight paid campsite, uh, so BBQ, showers, uh, toilet, uh, free Wi-Fi, and that's it. So, good morning. Uh, I just woke up and I realized that I can't spot the glacier from this campsite. So I was walking and I raised my head. Wait, got all the things for the breakfast to make in the kitchen. I raised my head and I saw a glacier. I was, what? So this is the beautiful kitchen we had in the, in the camping. Uh, these are the walks around the Franz Josef Glacier. We decided to go for this one. Best to see the glacier is this one called Free Day, which is not today. Over this track, but it's 5 hours and 20 minutes, and it says that the view is better in this one. Cosa cazzo è appena successo? I was trying to open the back door. And yeah, so I've fallen there. Okay, ready to go. We are going to the Franz Josef Glacier car park. Try and get some nice shot inside of the glacier if it is not cloudy, because at the moment it's very cloudy. Yesterday when I checked the hike was written one hour and a half return. It is probably 20 minutes. Most probably is the wrong track. Anyway, it's written that this is the best view of the glacier we can get, hopefully, without the clouds. What did you just lost? Okay, the one that we just did was the forest walk viewpoint and now we're going to the sentinel rock. Actually, both sentinel rock and forest walk viewpoints were nice, but not unforgettable. Moreover, they were super short and since we enjoy a bit of struggle and leaving our lungs on the path, we decided, due to the favorable weather condition, to go for Robert's Point track. A five hour and a half track leading to the crazy and super close viewpoint to the glacier. The walk was super suggestive and crossed four different suspended bridges. They were actually a bit frightening. I wasn't sure about this walk because it was five hours long, but it's actually remarkable. Bridges are crazy and beautiful at the same time. It's a bit steep, but really worth it. 
I will add all the name about the tracks and the places in the description below. Sportiva. Pazzesco. A few moments later. <laughs> okay, we're arrived. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I need this one. So those are the rich people that can afford a flight over the glacier are the poor ones that have to hike five hours to get this view. But I would do the hike again, it's beautiful. Oh my god, it's super soft. After five hours hiking, a properly made risotto all'onda After the hike and the early dinner, we drove north towards the free campsite we wanted to stay in yesterday and spend the night there. The highlight of the day after is Okitika Gorge, a beautiful blue complex of rivers. The only issues with this place was that bothering amount of sand flies making the sand bath and the chilling in the river impossible. <music> So we just arrived at Lake Rotoiti. Uh, we just been to the visitor center and we found out that there are plenty of hikes all around the mountains here. Uh, we would have loved to do at least one of them, but uh, it's already three, half past 3 p.m. So uh, a bit late for hiking. And in the next few days forecast like heavy rain. So probably we're gonna take a bath, a refreshing bath here, 100%. And then we are gonna go back to Murchison, spend the night. And probably tomorrow we're gonna head to where Double Tasman National Park. So a little update about what has been going on in the past few days. So we drove past Murchison towards Motueka, where we are now. When we arrived in Motueka, we found a terrible weather. Uh, it rained for two days, constantly, so we couldn't do anything. Uh, the main activity to do around Motueka is visiting the Abel Tasman National Park. In this park, you can either go for a multi-day hike along its coast, or you can rent a canoa or a kayak and visiting the coast of the Abel Tasman National Park. Since it was raining throughout the day, we didn't go for that, just chilled and spent some days in the cities. Plans for today, it is forecast rain as well. Since we don't want to stay in Montuac, we are driving towards Nelson for going up north to the Marlboro Sounds. We'll be probably staying there for a couple of days since we want to either drive a road, which is a famous and scenic road, and also do a short hike in Marlboro Sounds. But let's see if the weather allows. Anyway, let's go. Okay, so the news is uh, we are going to Marlboro Sounds to cover this road, this scenic road. The problem is that the ending of the road, the French Pass campsite, is fully booked. So our only hope is that Elaine Bay campsite, which is a no booking required campsite, might be free. 
but we can't know that so we are gonna go here today a paid campsite and we have to pay just in cash so we have to withdraw the money and drive until here this is a three hours road so six hours return so this might be one hour and a half visiting the information center is super useful because they have the current information about the weather the closed road gave you the best tips to what to do and what to see because it's their territory so if you're traveling around new zealand i would highly recommend to visit the visitor center each city you go to get a better understanding of the territory and the activities to do Today's video ends here. I knew I wouldn't have been able to place everything inside, but let's keep updated because next week I will show you probably the most beautiful road New Zealand has after Milford Sound. I will break my iPhone and I won't be able to record orcas while sailing across Marlborough Sounds because I forgot my camera as a short. Luckily, I brought with me my old iPhone 7. Leave me a comment below if you like the video, but also if you don't, and maybe suggest places I didn't talk about. Everyone can plan better their itinerary. Ciao!